What's up guys? Over here working on a race car. Uh, got a race coming up in a couple days. Time to do a little bit of maintenance. Uh, we were out last time at 17. Uh, car was running good. It's time to do some in-between races, in-between round maintenance. Uh, one thing I'm going to do today, I didn't do a lot of spark plug pulling at the race. So I'm going to pull all the plugs out real fast. Going to make sure we don't have any issues with the plugs. Um, make sure the tune-up is pretty close. Might do some individual adjustment uh, if it's needed. Um, we've got the ability with the Holly, we can adjust uh, individual cylinder timing and fueling. So we're going to take a look at it, see what it looks like. We've got a little bit of correction already in the computer. So uh, we'll see what the plugs are looking like and then we'll pull the data log, uh, see what that was doing. Something you always got to think about, you know, I mention it all the time. You got to pull the plugs, especially when you're in the beginning stages. When you're just getting started with these cars in the tuning process, I mean, the plugs need to be pulled almost every every pass and then as you get a little bit more comfortable uh you know you start getting a, a real stable uh cylinder to cylinder distribution for timing and for fueling then at that point you know you don't have to pull the plugs every single pass um i mean obviously if you go and you make a change if you add timing or if you reduce uh fuel then you know for sure you need to to pull the plugs you want to pull all the spark plugs uh in the beginning stages and the reason why is you're constantly going to have cylinders on every motor you're going to have some some cylinders that are a little bit hotter that they they need a little bit more fuel or a little bit less timing and then you've got some cylinders that need the opposite they're going to need less fuel and a little bit more timing so i mean it just completely depends on the motor every motor is different uh it doesn't matter if it's built just like your buddies or not uh pull them all out see what we got see how our tune-up was looking now these plugs have got three passes on them really when you like i said in that tuning phase you want to pull pull them after each pass but since we got three or four passes on these plugs it's just going to show us the hottest condition and so, you know, that could be, you know, if you're just in the tuning stage, which is not going to be in this one because I've already made it through there. But if you're just starting tuning, it could be that at 25 pounds of boost, you got way too much timing in it or it's way too lean. And so that's going to give you the, the hottest coloring on your plug, most likely. There's a lot of people that say that, you know, okay, well, the, the plug is going to, going to show you that at the very end of the run, the last, you know, 60 feet, 100 feet. And that might be true. That's where the motor is being lugged the hardest usually. But if you've missed the tune-up real bad early in the run, uh, I mean, it could be putting extra heat in the plug there. So, you know, that's why it's important in the beginning phases of tuning that you pull the plugs, you know, in incremental steps that, you know, when you get to 20 pounds of boost, you know, pull the plugs. And then the next pass, you got it up at 25 pounds of boost, pull the plugs at that one. And that way, you know, the whole tune-up from, you know, launch, all the way to max boost is going to be you know the same it's going to be good on the burn on the plugs and so then what you're going to do once you get to that point you know your tune-up's good then you want to periodically pull the plugs and you can make more passes on them and then that'll show you things going wrong with a cylinder now if you don't do it every pass i mean sometimes if you do it every pass you'll catch something before you hurt something so there is a chance, I mean, if you go three or four passes without pulling the plugs, you know, it might start tearing one hole up. If you got one injector that, you know, is getting stuck or, you know, it's got a piece of, piece of trash in it and it's not working like it should. So, I mean, there's a chance you might save it if you pull all the plugs, you know, every pass instead of every, every other pass or every three passes. Nitrous racers, I mean, they pull plugs every single pass. Every hole comes out. Uh, they look at it, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, it just depends on how much time you got in between rounds, what all you can do. And something else you got to think about. I see people that get stuck all the time just looking at the wideband, just looking at the oxygen sensor. And, you know, that thing's cumulative. I mean, it's going to be getting data from all the cylinders. So it's reading it as a whole. So, I mean, you know, it's not reading the individual cylinder. So the only thing in there, unless you've got individual EGTs or individual uh, O2, I mean, it's just not going to be there. Uh, I mean, it's not, you might not see it on the, on the oxygen sensor. The other thing you got to look at, you got to look at the way the car is performing and not just rely on that oxygen sensor. I say it time and time again. The oxygen sensor is a tool. And one of my buddies was at the track the other week, and his car was blubbering rich. Um, oxygen sensor was saying it was lean, but it was misfiring. And so what happens when it misfires? Same thing when it's on the two-step. When it misfires or when it puts out a cylinder, it's going to read lean. And so the computer is going to say, oh, we're lean. Let's add more fuel. And that may not be the right thing. So that's why you got to, you know, you got to tune it 
you know, based on what the spark plugs are showing you and based on what the car is doing. The oxygen sensor is not the all-in, be-all to, to tune in. So, all right, so let's pull some plugs real fast and see what mine look like. Okay, so we got all the plugs out. So something to be careful of when you're pulling the plugs out. They make some handy dandy trays and I need to build me one. Uh, but always make sure your plugs are in order. So this is number one, three, five, and seven. And so the other thing you wanna do, you wanna make sure you got a piece of paper and a pen and so that you can document exactly what you're, you're doing and what you're seeing as you're looking at them. I like to have them all out at one time. Some people pull them at one, you know, one at a time and they take notes as they're pulling one at a time. And that's, that's usually fine. But uh, usually you wanna be able to look at them in comparison to their neighbors. And then sometimes you'll get a little bit of information off of that. So first one I'm gonna look at number one here. Um, and the video is probably not gonna pick up everything. But looking at this, now this is a, a methanol plug. So, uh, you know, carbureted, or not carbureted. Oh my God, I just said blow through. Hopefully I won't ever have another blow through. Uh, EFI methanol um, turbo. And so, you know, I was having some high boost issues. So you can see the cadmium is this all nice silver. This nice silver color here is cadmium. And then when you look at the base ring here, this is how you tell fueling. So that is, the cadmium is mostly still there. Now, most of the cadmium is burned off of the ground strap. Now, this is a number 10 plug. So a number 11 plug is going to show a little bit less heat in that ground strap. But if you look at that right about there it's kind of difficult to see is about where the timing mark is is what i would say it's kind of hard to see it but it's a little it's a little bit far on the bend it's still on the bend about the bend is about where you generally want it so let's look and see what the other neighbors are doing so this is number three there again now this one is pretty close to the same there's hardly any cadmium burn on the base ring. So my, it looks like my fueling is good. So I'm going to say my air fuel ratio is, is okay. The timing, same thing. It looks like it's just on the, on the bend there. So I'm going to say the timing is good on both of those. Number one, we might've could, we might could take out a half a degree of timing on that one. Well, let's see how they're all looking. Otherwise, this is number five. Now that one right there is pretty doggone clear where the timing mark is on that one. That's exactly like I like it. That timing mark right there. Now if you look at the fueling on that one though, it's got some of the, the cadmium is burned off about a quarter. And you can go a half or a full turn and really not hurt anything. But generally from what I've seen, the car doesn't really pick up from running it leaner. So that hole right there, number five, we're going to add, we're going to add 1% of fuel. So I'm going to get my, so number five, five plus 1%. And so number one and number three, I'm looking at these in the sunlight. I'm going to take out a degree of timing. One, and three minus one degree okay so let's look at number number seven here fueling looks about perfect on it they're getting most of the cadmium now that one there it looks like it could use a half a degree of timing possibly no, that's, that looks like it's going to be pretty close. I think it might just be a little richer, but you can see the, it looks like the timing mark is coming about right there. You got another one up there, but you can see the cadmium is burning all the way to right there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave number seven alone. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not do anything to number seven. So number one and number three, I'm going to take out a degree of timing. Number five, I'm going to add a percent of fuel. There goes my notes. 
So that's what I'm gonna do on that one. Let's go check out the other side. Okay. So over here, so this is number two, four, six, eight. Start with number two. I don't know if you can see that real good on that. Almost that whole base ring, even down here on the side, is turning white. That is from where the cadmium is burning. So the timing mark on this one is going to be, this one was a little bit leaner, so the timing mark is done and gone off around the bend. I'm going to say it's always, the strap is all the way gone, but probably it done that because the, the that cylinder is lean. That cylinder is for sure lean. Now, I don't see any any evidence of any ground strap problems as far as it's melting or anything like that. But you can definitely tell, I mean, this hole right here, it's hard to, it's really hard to see. I hope, I hope this is going to come out good in the video. I'm trying to protect the, there you go. It is white. And so that is. That whiteness is where the cadmium is burnt. So the cadmium is burnt on this one. So it is lean. So I'm gonna add like 2% fuel to that one. And always keep these in the, the right hole. So number two, I'm gonna add 2%. And I think I was actually leaning that hole up. So I may have, that may have been an issue. We'll pull the data log in a few minutes. Okay, so this one looks like there's a little bit right there is a is a timing mark there is where I'm gonna say fueling looks good. I mean that one might could could use a, a half a degree of timing, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave it where it's at. That's pretty close. It looks pretty safe. Now this one right here, this one needs fuel. It's hard to tell again it's hard to see but the the cadmium is burnt on this one it is actually gone and usually you don't want to rub it but i'm just trying to make sure see how much it's gone it's actually gone you see the just a little bit right here in this corner where it's left but the rest of it's burnt so that plug there is going to be number six we're going to add I'm gonna add 2% of that one too. And then number eight as our final. That one looks pretty close. I mean, it's, it, it looks like it might need 1% of fuel. So I'm gonna add a little bit of fuel on that one too. Okay, so number eight, I'm gonna do 1%. One percent. So individual cylinder. This is what I'm doing for my individual cylinder. So this is what I'm I'm changing. I'll put new plugs in it. Pull the tune real fast and see what I'm doing for my individual cylinder. And this is what we're going to do. So whatever is in there now, this is the changes we're going to make. So you don't start back from scratch. You just start by by what you have in there at the time. And so that's how you how you make those individual cylinder changes. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, real quick, here's the, the tune up. Uh, this is my base tune. If you come over here and click the computer and then scroll down, you'll see individual cylinder. And this is a fuel correction here and then timing correction here. So if you look at uh, number one and number three, we're saying we need to take out a degree. So number one, a degree, number three, minus a degree. So we're good there. So number five, we want to add 1% of fuel. So over here, we're really doing anything to that one that was on zero. So number two, we want to add 2%. So look at that, that's my lean hole right there. I was already adding 3%. So we're gonna jack that up to five. Let's see if that gets, It's a lot of fuel going in one hole there. Um, you know, it's interesting why it's doing that. I don't, I don't really understand. Uh, being in the front, I would have thought that that one would have needed less fuel, but that is incorrect. 
So number six plus 2%. Now we were taking out 2% before, so we're just gonna make that zero. Since it, we want to put that back. And then number eight is at plus 1% already, so we wanna add another one there. And so this is what we got for my individual. So number one, number cylinder number two, that's the front passenger side. That one's got a lot of extra fuel. So I mean, I could be having a possibly a fuel injector issue on that hole. Um, I mean, all the rest of them you see within a couple percent. I would think we should be within a couple percent max from cylinder to cylinder. So it may be time to take those injectors out and send them off and get them flowed uh, shortly. And I'll number them when I do that. And then that way I can make sure, you know, we know which ones are which. And then you can see the, the timing correction. I mean, we don't have a lot of timing correction happening. Number one and number two, the front holes up there. And then the number three. So uh, not too bad. So that's my individual cylinder timing. So that's why you want to pull all the plugs. You know, that way you can make those changes if you're on EFI and you have the ability to. And this is the plugs that, that we use. The uh, 5671A10. It's just basically a three-quarter inch plug with a washer, non-resistor, and it's a not non-protruded electrode. And you see, I always put just a little bit of, just a dab of anti-seize on the threads. Don't overdo it. It don't need to be a, it don't need to have a ton, but just a little bit. So um, always make sure you, you know, stick these things in. And uh, on an NGK plug, uh, dash 10 is colder than a dash 9. So that generally... Most spark plugs are the opposite. The higher the number, the hotter it is, but that is opposite on NGKs. NGK, the higher the number, the colder it is. And they make a number 11 plug, and that's what we're actually going to probably put in Randy's. Uh, it'll give you a, a different reading. And so, you know, the way the, the way the heat of the plug works, you can see it's very shallow looking down in there for where the, the porcelain is. So a very hot plug has a whole lot of porcelain showing down in there and so what happens the heat a cold plug the porcelain is it gets the heat out through the threads and then the heads absorb it a hot plug the porcelain gets hotter so it will stay cleaner um but you know when you get to a, a lot of nitrous or a lot of boost then you've got to have a colder plug otherwise it could it could you know start burning that ground strap and then it will uh auto ignite it'll have some pre-ignition Possibly, uh, it could help have pre-ignition to where it actually, the, it lights off before you even get the spark. And that's catastrophic when it does that. So that's a little bit about heat range too. So heat range makes a big difference though. So if I had number 11s in all of these, then they would all look a lot colder because it's getting, you know, the, the metal is not gonna get as hot. So that's how we look at the plugs. And you can pick up these uh, NGK plugs usually get ours from rock auto they're really cheap they're like a dollar fifty a piece dollar fifty nine a piece all right that's how i do my spark plugs please like comment and subscribe and y'all go fast and get some wind lights thanks